Hi there. Welcome back to Online Sunday School. I'm so glad that you could join us this week and I hope that things are going well for you at home. So we're starting a new season, if you will, and either you've started it maybe this week, uh, you'll start tomorrow, maybe you've already started, or maybe you're going to start next week uh, if you are ready to go to school, whether that be college or high school or elementary school. Uh, maybe you don't have to worry about getting ready for school, uh, but you think of those who have. And so in order to be ready for school, uh, there are some things that you probably uh, have done this year or maybe because you're doing school virtually, you did it last year. And those things are you have to shop for the right tools to help you be successful. Now, maybe that's new clothes because you grew out of the, your school clothes over the summer and you need something to wear to go to school. Uh, but uh, the normal tools that we think of might be uh, a computer if you're an older student. Uh, maybe it's crayons, markers, uh, paper, pens, pencils. Uh, all of these things, and definitely Germex, uh, are things that you might uh, get this year or during a normal year to get ready for school. Well, uh, today we're not talking about preparing for school uh, in our Bible lesson, but we do hear about preparing for something else. We are preparing uh, to for our battle against Satan and sin daily and we hear about how we prepare for that battle in Ephesians 6 where it tells us to put on the armor of God and so uh, there will be questions throughout this video for you to discuss and I encourage you to pause the video uh, before uh, we move on uh, but at this time, I encourage you to take out your Bibles, and we are going to be in Ephesians 6. And Ephesians is in the New Testament. It's, ap it's after the Gospels, and then it's Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, and then it's Galatians, and then we have Ephesians. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians in the New Testament. And we're going to be in chapter 6. So look for the big 6, and then the little 10 is where we're going to be at. So, it says in verses 10 to 11 in Ephesians 6, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes or tricks of the devil. So, here it tells us to put on the full armor of God to protect us from tricks. So, what kinds of tricks uh, does the devil have or the, what kinds of tricks does the devil use against us? Take some time to talk about that uh, with your family. So what kinds of tricks does the devil use? All right, and then how does God help us uh, to withstand or defeat the tricks that Satan tries to use against us? So some of the tricks that the devil might use is distraction uh, to distract us from what's really important. Uh, maybe that's in our vocation as students or as teachers or as um, husbands, wives, uh, and uh, he uses distraction uh, to keep us from doing what we're supposed to do. Uh, he might use division, which would be... Uh, splitting up people uh, who uh, are at odds against each other, so people that don't agree, and making those arguments get um, bigger and bigger, which isn't good, uh, because then you can really hurt people on each side, and we see that in the news, and the government, and uh, maybe we do that, see that at school uh, between uh, friends that don't agree on something, and they argue and fight about it. Um, or we might see it online. And so Satan might 
use tricks such as that. There's lots of tricks that the devil can use, like greed as well. Uh, how does God help us to defeat those tricks? Well, he gives us his word and he gives us the people around us to help us uh, when we are tempted to encourage us to stand firm and to also, um, you know, let us know when we do something wrong or help us keep on track. Uh, God helps us in that way. And then also through Christ, his son and the Holy Spirit. So it says, tells us to stand firm uh, within the armor of God. Well, what is the armor of God? Well, I'm going to read the rest of verses 12 to 20, and we'll hear about what the rest of the armor of God is, and then we'll go back through it and talk about it. So, Ephesians 6, verses 12 to 20. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth. Boldly, to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am, I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So here, Paul is talking about the armor of God, and then he also asks for prayers that he's able to stand up and tell other people about the gospel um, as an Christ's um, representative with the armor of God. And so we saw here a lot of big words. So if you don't know what some of those words mean, I encourage you together to go back through uh, the Bible reading and write down those words or mark them and then look them up together uh, and talk about what they mean and what they mean in uh, the context context, or in what they mean in our Bible reading today. Because sometimes words have a lot of different meanings. So uh, whenever also... Paul uses the word therefore in his letters. It's really important. So whenever you see therefore, it means pay attention. Pay attention. Got it? All right. So it says in verse 13, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, or withstand Satan, having done all to stand firm. So Paul's talking about the whole armor of God, putting it on so that we are able to stand up and stand strong in our faith, and um, be able to stand against Satan in the battle uh, of sin. And then he also says in verse 14 again, Therefore, stand, having fastened the belt of truth. Well, so this is part of the armor of God, and this starts off the whole part of the armor section. Where do we find truth? Where do we find truth? That's right. We find truth in the Bible, in God's word, uh, when we hear it and when we read it. And then it says, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, if you don't want to, if you don't know what a breastplate is, it was the metal covering that there was usually like leather straps that hooked it on. And it went from your shoulder and like a collar. And then it went all the way to your stomach to help protect you from an attack at the front if someone's sword or arrow or something got by uh, the shield that you were carrying. And so the breastplate of righteousness uh, protected uh, the chest, um, like your heart and your lungs, and then your other organs uh, that are in your stomach area. And so 
it says breastplate of righteousness well what is righteousness well here it's talking about christ's righteousness that god clothes us with so everything jesus did everything right and then took on our sin so that we could be right with god we could be clean uh, we could be new and uh, perfect and so right is being or doing the right things and uh, being held up for that and so then it talks about the shoes because if you're preparing for battle it's pretty important to be wearing shoes on your feet wouldn't you say yeah you can't really go very far without shoes I mean you could but after a while your feet would really hurt and so it says shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace so uh, by putting on shoes we are being ready to go somewhere uh, in my family if you don't have your shoes on uh, people are waiting for you to be ready to go and so we need to put on the shoes which are the gospel of peace because the gospel helps us to be ready for life and the battles and trials and hard things that we will face um, by living in the world and living in a world of sin uh, where Satan is able to uh, use his power. And so we need the gospel to help us be ready. And those are our shoes. And then it talks about a shield. And it says, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and extinguishes putting out. And so the shield of faith is the faith that we have in Christ. And uh, back in old times, the shield was usually made out of wood, not metal. There might have been metal pieces on it to help hold it together, but main part of the shield was wood and so they would soak the shield in water uh, because back then sometimes the arrows that were shot were flaming arrows they had fire on them and so what happens if you put fire on something that's dry and is wood it burns up and so they would soak the shields in water to prevent the uh, arrows from doing more damage than they already did. Uh, and so they would soak the shield with water. Well, here, when it talks about the shield of faith, it's especially important because if the shield is soaked in the water, it reminds us how we are um, watered or made clean in the waters of baptism and how uh, God sends his spirit of faith to us um, to help us grow and to be in relationship with him. And so the shield of faith is not only important because it's about our faith, but it also reminds us about our baptism and being called and chosen as God's child. Then it talks about the helmet of salvation. The helmet protects us as well, protects our head. And it talks about salvation. Well, what is salvation? Well, salvation is to be saved. And here, what do you think it means to be saved by? Yeah, saved from our sin and protected and saved by Christ and what he's done for us. And then it talks about the sword because we've talked about all these things that help protect us in battle. But when you're in a battle, you need something to attack your enemy with because you can't stand there defending all day. Well, the sword here is called the sword of the spirit. And what that means is that our sword is the word of God. It is the Bible because it helps us to counter or go up against Satan because remember the Bible is the truth and Satan is lies or full of lies. He likes to tell lots of lies. 
And so the sword of the spirit, being the word of God, helps us to fight against Satan and when we are confronted by lies um, and tempted to do the wrong thing. And we have the Bible to help us and tell us the truth and to tell other people the truth about God um, so that they are able to have the armor of God. And all of this is really important, but we can't forget the last thing, which isn't really a piece of armor, but it's just as important. And it's talked about a few times actually in the last few verses. It's prayer. Paul talks about prayer. He says, praying at all times in the spirit, with all prayer and supplication. And he keeps talking about uh, words that have to do with prayer. Because... When we pray, we're talking to God, right? Yeah, it's really important. And because you can't be in a relationship with someone that you never talk to, it doesn't really work too well. And God talks to us in his word, but that if we don't, you know, come to him in a prayer, it's kind of one-sided, right? I don't know about you, but it's really hard to have a relationship with someone that I don't ever talk to. So it's important to be in prayer uh, because we talk to God. We are able to tell him our troubles, our fears, our joys, our successes. And also we're able to ask him for help and to ask for help for other people um, on behalf of other people. And we're also able to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness. And that is why prayer is so important because it helps us in our relationship with him to grow stronger so that our armor of God is stronger too. So as you get ready for the school year or whatever life is throwing at you right now, I encourage you to remember that we've been given this great gift called the armor of God to help us be ready and prepared to battle Satan and sin. And even when it seems really, really hard, remember that we're still, um, God is still there uh, and that he's called us through baptism and that we are able to see the truth in God's word and talk to God. So a couple activities before we go are in the description below. Uh, one is a song called Stand Strong and it's a link for the video. And then there's also a coloring page and, and I challenge you to maybe make a sword or a shield to help you remember uh, the armor of God. And maybe you make it out of paper, maybe you make it out of cardboard. Uh, I found some of these old shield crafts laying around church and so I colored one of those. So if you're in the area and you want one of those to color, you can stop by church during the week and we can get you one of those. But uh, those are the activities for this week, which are also in the description below. So before we go, we're going to close in prayer. And you remember how we pray? We pray by folding our hands, closing our eyes, and bowing our heads. And I will say a line, and you pray it back to God. Are you ready? Please pray with me. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for giving us a spiritual armor to fight against Satan. Remind us that you are always with us as we start the school year or a new journey in life. Help us to stand firm in our faith. In your name, 
Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. See you next time.